Hello everyone and welcome to Vibu Systems new webinar Enhancing License Management with Salesforce. Each month join us for new powerful messages, technical tips and success stories that will leave you inspired and ready to get your protection, licensing and security techniques another step closer to perfection. Our hosts today are Rudiger Kugler, security expert at Vibu Systems and Stefan Bamberg, Senior Key Account Manager at Vibu Systems. After receiving a degree in physics, Rudiger became involved in marketing software solutions for the financial industry and key account management for e-commerce businesses. As Vice President of Sales and Professional Services at Vibu Systems since 2003, he has played a critical role in helping customers implement innovative security solutions for desktop applications, cloud services and embedded systems. After studying computer science at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, Stefan worked in R&D for traffic simulation before switching over to IT project management and key account management for large ICT companies. At VB Systems, he is now working in the key account division of the sales department. Today, we are going to talk about how to expedite license deployment by integrating CodeMeter with Salesforce. This session is being recorded and a link to the replay will be posted directly to you in a couple of days. You are all muted, but you can post your questions in the live chat room. We will answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. And now, let's get started. Good morning, my name is Stefan Bamberg and I have my colleague uh, Brigitte Kukler here with me. Today, tomorrow, uh, this morning, we want to show you how easy it is to integrate uh, our CodeMeter License Central into Salesforce. So, let's start with our first slide. So, first of all, the introduction to all the, the things. So, our CodeMeter License Central, which is a license entitlement management system, uh, consists of three different parts. So, the first one is you want to create licenses uh, that you want to uh, sell to your customers later on. The second one is you want to deliver these licenses to your customer uh, online or offline, what, uh, what you need for your, the purposes of your customers. And of course, you want to manage all the licenses. So that means what licenses do you want to sell to the customers, which license models are uh, used for that, and uh, the complete reporting staff, uh, who has activated his licenses, when, on which computer. So, the references to an ERP or CRM system on your site uh, is uh, the customer ID. That means that is the only thing that is known for both systems. Your ERP system knows everything about the customer, the address, the email address, uh, anything that is important for the customer, and uh, our license center later on knows any, everything about the licensing and the license activations as well. So, another thing which is important, we have an order ID here, that is the relation to the real selling process on both sides. So, that's the uh, connection between the two systems, the customer ID on the one side and the order ID on the other side. The License Central offers a, a great a SOAP interface uh, so that you can uh, control the license central from a leading system, in this case here, the Salesforce system, and of course it is a cloud-based system because it is uh, at, the server at the server side here. Yeah, hello also uh, from, from my side, uh, my name is, is Rüdiger Kügler, and uh, on the next slide we see uh, Salesforce. What, what does Salesforce do? So Salesforce is a CRM system. So we have accounts so you can manage your customers, you can generate uh, products, assets, projects, so it's a complete CRM system which is also running in the cloud uh, like, like License Central. Uh, by the way, later we will see there are different editions of License Central, so you can have a hosted one which is already in the cloud or you can install it on-premise on, on your site, but going back to this later. So uh, Salesforce, License Central are both cloud systems and in Salesforce we have the option to customize the, the workflow management. 
So if you have your own process to create items, to sell assets, assign products to, to customers, something like this, you can customize uh, Salesforce by uh, programming with, it is called Apex, and with this you can create your own uh, workflow, you can create um, uh, additional buttons or additional processes within Salesforce. And as already mentioned, Salesforce also is a is a cloud-based system. And so, as we have seen here, both systems, License Central and Salesforce, are both uh, cloud-based systems. And uh, on one hand, uh, Salesforce has this, has this Apex programming interface, by the way, where you can call web services, which are SOAP-based. And on the other hand, License Central has this SOAP interface. And so, both systems can communicate communicate with each other via this, this SOAP interface. It, it really fits uh, uh, perfectly. And as we see, uh, License Central and Salesforce complete each other because in License Central we have all the entitlement information. So uh, we have a customer ID and we know which licenses are assigned to this customer. Are the licenses already activated? Are they reactivated due to the fact that a computer was lost or something like this? And in Salesforce, we have all the account data. So, from which country does he come from? Uh, what is his turnover? How many uh, employees are working there? And, and so on. And so, we have uh, really um, uh, both uh, on, on both sides different information which fit and share together. Okay, let's have a look uh, on the process flow. So, there are five steps that uh, you have to uh, go through. So the first one is the vendor creates the licenses in Salesforce. So this, is, this means this is an assigning of an asset to an existing account, account of your customer. So this is step one. You can see it on the right side in the picture. So the second step is Salesforce sends a request to, co to the code meter license central, uh, which means please return me a ticket uh, for products that the customer wants to buy. So Salesforce has a, a combination of different products and you pick some products for your customer and in the second step you create such a ticket or it could be uh, called an uh, activation code for the customer so that he is able to activate the licenses later on on his system. Uh, the third uh, step uh, is the vendor sends the ticket to the user so maybe that's via email or a delivery form, for example. So, and let's assume I'm the user, and now I got this ticket from, from Stefan, or for maybe by email or via a delivery notice or something like this. And then I can go online to a web portal, or I can do it within my software, so just entering this ticket. It looks like an activation code, so it's a five time five uh, uh, string. And I enter this, this activation code ticket in the software or in the portal, and then I'm activating the license. Yes, and that's, that's the step four. So the user activates the license on his computer. And in the fifth step, uh, Salesforce pulls the license, license central uh, activation information. So you have a completely uh, clear view uh, on the on the status of the activation on the customer side. So if the customer activates his licenses, you know that on the side of Salesforce. So Stefan, this was uh, very um, uh, theoretical. Can we can we show this in Salesforce? Of course, we can do that. So let's switch from the presentation to our Salesforce account. So. You, that's a look that must be familiar to you. So that's the Salesforce.com start site here. So I'm now on the home screen and I want to create now um, an asset for an existing account. So I choose here the account and you see I have one sample company as an account here in my Salesforce. And if I click on this account, you can see I have uh, a lot of different information about the sample company, the billing address, uh, phone number and so on. And you can see here at the bottom uh, assets. So the assets means that are uh, offers to my customer that are uh, real assets that I assign now. So if I create now a new asset for this customer, I have something to fill in. First of all, I want to 
see what products do I have in my Salesforce already assigned. So you can see here a list of products that I have prepared for this webinar. So I have a, a notepad editor program which consists of three parts. So the basic module, which means it is the part where you can enter the text, and you have two additional modules that I want to sell to the customer as well. So I have a font module where, where you can change the font and I have a hex view module where you can see the text that you have inputted in Hazard Decimal. So I have uh, two different flavors of that because the code meter technology offers uh, as well hardware based security and licensing and software based licensing. So CM Act licenses means the software licenses and CM Stick means uh, this is a hardware based license where you use a dongle for that. So now I decide to um, assign the asset for the sample notepad basic module for a hardware based security with a stick and I decide that this module will cost $99 for example and I say this is a test for the webinar. Now I save this and you can see I have now assigned a new asset for my customer here. You see here the sample company, you see the price, I can push on the sample company and now I have this asset assigned to this sample company account. Okay, so now I have... So okay, now we have assigned this asset to uh, our customer and now we want to create a ticket. So and uh, how how can we create a ticket, Stefan? Yeah, we go back to the asset again, and there we have a new button here. And how this magic button comes to the side, we will explain a little bit later. Uh, that means create a ticket, create the activation code for this asset. So I push the button, create ticket, and you see I have here the internal customer identification of Salesforce. Uh, I'm able to add another comment to this asset, so I can say this is a test for the webinar. And this is the uh, SKU of our item, um, which all also has to be assigned in the license central as well. We will see that later on. But now I push the create ticket button, and now a connection is established between Salesforce and the license central. And at the end you get back from the license central this activation code which is called ticket from our site. And this is the thing that the customer will get from you to be able to activate the licenses on his site. So before we activate this ticket, you can see here the serial number with the ticket, we have a short look on the current status of this uh, activation. So I have the possibility to ask the license central without, within uh, Salesforce for the current status of this um, activation and you see the activation is available for the customer. This is an important thing because now we have everything ready for the activation on the customer side. So I'm the ISV role here and Rudiger will be the user at the end. So now I deliver this uh, serial number, this ticket activation code to Rudiger with the, uh, via email or in delivery form and uh, now Rudiger will be able to activate the licenses here on his computer. Okay, so uh, now let's assume I have got an email from Stefan. Let's, let's just do it uh, like, an, like a small email and I will copy this, oops, I will copy this in my email, notepad, there it is, and up. So, okay, here, here, here we are. Uh, the, uh, so, so maybe the email is looking like the Rüdiger, uh, here is your activation code, your ticket number, uh, grateful thanks for purchasing our product, something like this, and uh, we've included the ticket number, and so maybe this, that's an email that I have got from, from Stefan now. So and now I'm the user, I will copy this ticket into my clipboard because I don't want to uh, type it in manually. So and, uh, I'm going to 
the web portal. I'm going to the web uh, portal of, of Stefan. Let's assume Stefan is the ISV. And uh, of course Stefan will customize this portal to his look and feel so that I'm as a customer, I'm feeling familiar with him and I'm feeling, okay, yes, that's uh, from Bibu Systems, the portal, or in this case from the same company from Stefan. I will enter my ticket here and I'm pressing the search button. And now I see, oh, there is one license uh, available. It is available for my code minor dongle, my code minor stick. And uh, I see here, oh, I have the option, because I have already two dongles on my computer, I can choose maybe this one, this is fine. And, um, oops, I have a uh, German uh, Internet Explorer, that's why he switched to German. Okay, uh, and saying, okay, this one is fine. And now I can press activate licenses. And uh, when I do this, there's a fingerprint of my dongle, which is uh, generated, will be transferred to uh, License Central. License Central now checks, is this really a ticket which has been uh, created by License Central, and uh, finds out which modules, which licenses, laying behind this ticket. It's our sample Notepad uh, basic module, and uh, it sends me a license activation file. This is imported into the, the dongle, and so the dongle is now programmed, and I see here license fully activated. And I also see here in, the, in Stefan's portal, I see the status, license is already activated, so it's no longer available. And uh, when I take a look into the, the dongle, this was a screenshot of the dongle before, and when I refresh this page, we see from Stefan from sample company, now I have my sample notepad basic module dongle as a local license in, in, my, in my dongle and with this product code and so if I start my software, now the software will start because it's activated. So it's very simple and very easily for me to activate the license that I uh, got from Stefan which was generated by, by Salesforce. Yes, and by the way, the Web Depot is part of our license central internet extensions and uh, you can use this. It's ready to go uh, for your use and uh, as Rudiger really said before, it is very easy to individualize the visual interface, interface of that Web Depot. So, now the license is activated on, on the site of Rudiger. So, let's go again uh, and let's check for the activation state here now. I again read from Salesforce the activation state and uh, now the license is activated. So, I got this information sooner or later from the license center. So, here it is. So, you can see the activation state is now switched from available to activated and uh, you have a clear view on what licenses your customer has really activated. So now you can see here um, the complete uh, part, uh, the, the company details and his, the assets that you have here. So we can maybe make uh, another asset, uh, for example, for uh, an additional module that I have mentioned before. I like to buy the editor, this, this hex editor. The hex editor, okay, yes. no problem. So I got a call from Rüdiger, he wants to buy the hex editor, it's a great thing. So let's see here again. Um, I, take the, I take the hex view module again for the hardware-based licensing for the stick and I make him a good price, $39 today. Oh, that's too expensive. <laughs> No, unfortunately not. It is necessary. Okay, we give you 38. Okay, no problem. I take it. I take it. Okay. Additional hex view module. Okay, it's the same procedure that we have seen that before. Okay, so here we can create another ticket now. So it's. Uh, additional module as a comment. I create the ticket. Now the same thing happens like before. So Salesforce sends the, uh, the article name, uh, the, the SKU, um, to and then the uh, customer ID to the license central. The license central creates a ticket for that and as you see the ticket is already there. So I save that again and if we have a look now 
on the company side, you see I have now a second asset here and uh, it is not activated. We can see that here. So again, we can, if you like that, we, go, we activate that on your computer. So now I get a second email from Stefan, so I just uh, simulated here with uh, thank you very much for purchasing this additional module. So and um, maybe we can also combine both tickets to, to one, which is also possible. And so I'm going now to the portal to the portal again and uh, saying home and now I'm entering both tickets. And I see, oh, there are two or two uh, modules available. One is our hex, hex module, the other one is the basic module. And as we see here, the basic module is already activated. And the other one, the hex view mod module, is not activated yet. Okay, I'm choosing the same uh, Copina dongle and I'm pressing activate licenses. I want to activate this hex view now also. And okay. So, and let's take a look into our dongle again with our uh, local local running uh, web, web service. And then we see now I have both licenses activated. Now I have this basic module activated and I have this hex view module also activated. So now both licenses are there and when I start the software, I can now also click on the button uh, show hex uh, view and uh, use this module. Uh, Stefan, can you see that it is, it is activated already? Of course, let's switch back to our Salesforce site. Now I check with the activation reader again on the activation state of this HexU license now. So now there's another connection between Salesforce and the License Central and the License Central will give us the status here that is also activated. So if we check on the sample company. Now you can see um, that there are two uh, activated licenses um, in, in this, uh, two assets, activated assets for this company. So that's the whole thing from the ISV side and uh, from the user side, how to create such an asset, uh, how to deliver that to a customer. There are, you have a lot of options with Salesforce here uh, with, with programming. And on the other side you have seen how easy it is to activate the licenses um, on the customer side. That's the same thing for the dongles like for software activations. So there is no change anywhere here in Salesforce or in the license centers. You have uh, only different uh, articles for that and you can sell uh, as well uh, the hardware-based uh, licenses and software-based licenses. Okay, I, I see already there's uh, one question from you. And the question is, um, do I need to create one ticket for each product? And uh, the answer is no. So in this case, we just show a very simple integration. So this is an in, in integration where we have the use case in our mind. I have very simple products. I'm selling a product and that's it. If you have, uh, as, as already uh, discussed, uh, in Salesforce, you can customize your own workflow. And if you have uh, a modular uh, product that you sell in different modules and you will say, okay, the customer wants to get one license which includes this, 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 uh, which has different options, different features. In this case, uh, you can say, I'm not only using still or just assets, which is a very easy way. You can say, I'm creating a project and I'm assigning many assets, one, two, three, many uh, assets to, to this project and then you can send uh, the whole project in one process to License Central and in this case License Central of course will only generate one ticket for this customized module and so uh, this is just one sample how you can integrate it in, in Salesforce and uh, what we see here when we go to, the, to this asset and um, when we say I want to have this activation reader and the activation reader should uh, check uh, is this license already activated, yes, no. So uh, of course you can also push this information uh, back in the background um, and uh, you can define should this be done by, by Salesforce, should this be done by, by our system and so the pushing back the information is also something you can 
automized so that it is not only on this you need to click the activation reader button. Uh, this is just for a, a small demonstration which shows uh, how, how it works in, in general. And uh, of, co of course if you um, cast or you can customize Salesforce in a more more deeper way. Okay, so let's switch back to the presentation. Yeah, so now we will have a closer look uh, to the integration of the Code Meter License Central into Salesforce. So we have uh, two steps here. So the initial setup that has to be done in Salesforce and Code Meter we will show you on the next slides and of course in Salesforce and License Central uh, directly. Uh, and then we will show you how to set up a product on base on both sides. So that is the essential thing. Both uh, systems must know which products you want to sell to your customers. Uh, the license central side needs to know about the products and the licenses, the characteristics of the licenses, and Salesforce needs something to know about the SKU that you can sell to the customer. So first of all, we have the initial uh, initial setup, and uh, Rudiger, how complicated is it really to integrate a Codemeter License Center into Salesforce? So we have a ready-to-use uh, generic connector or Salesforce connector, which you can use to uh, to via Apex to, to call License Central and tell them this is an asset, and please generate one ticket for for this asset. And so this is this is quite quite easy and simple. Uh, if we think of the second use case with the, with the project and you generate a project then we have uh, a second uh, ready to use connector which can be of course adapted a little bit to your requirements and in this case uh, we are getting the whole project and then we are we are checking has is some was something changed in the, in the in the project is this a new project is this a project that we already know where some assets were added or some assets were removed and then we change the license and send the same ticket back again but in our simple case it is just let's say less less than less than one day so if you have an experienced the apex programmer which already does your salesforce adaptation he will do this simple integration within less than less than one day uh, of course to to do this you need to have the opportunity to use this apex functionality and so it's this is in, uh, included in salesforce enterprise or salesforce unlimited so you need one of these two additions to do such an integration and of course on our side you need Codemeter License Central Internet Edition. Uh, Stefan, which, which editions do we offer by the way? Oh, we have a lot of different editions here. So uh, you can see on the left side the desktop edition which is the License Central that is uh, uh, used within your company, only within your company. It's not the focus today. Uh, the Internet Edition, that's the thing that uh, Rüdiger uh, mentioned before, is the License Central that allows you to have um, uh, the, the whole complete administration within your company as a server, but you can offer all the services, uh, activating uh, a license on the customer side, uh, creating orders via Salesforce, for example, with this edition, and you can uh, put this edition in your data center. But we also offer a hosting here in our data center in Germany so that you have no uh, challenges with uh, network um, administration or backup or anything else. You can rely on our data uh, center here. So we have a data center edition where you share your computer with other companies. It's the easy uh, edition of the License Central, but you have all the functionality of the License Central available. But you can also have a dedicated server edition. That means that you have your own system and you can uh, put uh, own um, connectors, gateways on this uh, computer and you can use that. But we have two another editions. Rüdiger, what means that? So the high performance edition is one edition which is uh, just optimized for, for more performance. And so, of course, uh, we have uh, bigger computers. We have uh, uh, a secure. Uh, to use License Central, you need a security hardware in the background which uh, holds the keys and which uh, generates uh, licenses and, and keys. And in case of the high performance edition, you have your own uh, really hardware in the background which uh, cr creates the licenses. And so this is uh, designed for if you have more than 1,000 uh, activations per day. 
So the high availability package is a combination of two high performance editions. And so if, if one is down, is down or if you need uh, more than the 1,000 activations per day, which is uh, a real big project in this case, um, uh, then you need this high availability package which uh, bundles and, uh, and uh, allows you more performance than the, the high performance ed edition. And uh, our integration with Salesforce works in every edition except uh, the desktop edition. So the desktop edition is the on-premise edition which you, which you can use in your company without any customization, without a SOAP interface. The Internet Edition is the on-premise edition that you can install on your server and then you can need to open up the interface uh, to the Internet to have this connection to Salesforce. And uh, all the other four data center dedicated high performance and high availability, these are the packages that are already hosted, ready to use in the cloud so you don't need to care about where to install, which ports to open and so on. They are already ready to use in the cloud, operated by us. And uh, so all these five editions can be used together with, with Salesforce. Yes, and the integration in Salesforce uh, is possible with all these packages in the same way. And Rudiger will show us now how that will be integrated, how License Central will be integrated. So what we need is this uh, Salesforce connector with the name Generic Connector. So, so you see uh, it can also be used for other CRM systems. It's not, uh, not only uh, available for, for Salesforce. And uh, what we see here is uh, just uh, WSDL. And so our, our server uh, just uh, generates this, this interface. And in this interface you see it, it is, is it this uh, description of uh, which uh, attributes, which, uh, or which uh, data is sent, how is the name of the function and uh, all you need to do is to import this uh, WSDL into your, your Salesforce and then you just can uh, call this function. And uh, so there's, uh, in this case, this is the most important uh, part of the Apex uh, programming. You, you just generate a proxy class, which means uh, this is an reference object uh, to our interface and then there are two functions and the one function is the do order and here we have uh, the uh, function name single item uh, order without login and uh, all you need to, uh, to give or to hand over is the customer identification, so the customer ID. In our sample we use the internal ID of Salesforce, so I have this internal reference of course, if you say you have your own custom ID which is unique, then you can use this instead of the internal one of Salesforce. We have a comment field where you can add some additional information or you can keep it empty. And item information which is the stock keeping unit number, so it's the SKU uh, of the, the product. So this is a unique identifier which uh, defines uh, which product from Salesforce should be be taken and should be uh, or for which sh should be uh, yeah, uh, license generated. The the other call, the, the second call, is uh, as simple as the first one. This is the get activation state, and uh, here um, we just uh, enter the ticket number. So our ticket number, which is in our sample stored in the serial number already existing serial number field of of, of Salesforce, and so we just say get activation state with our ticket and then we get the state, is it already activated or is it available? And um, then uh, we can say get activation date, so at which time date it was uh, activated and uh, so we have also the ticket number, we need to hand over the ticket number and then we just get the activation date back. So there are, in the end there are, there are two classes, one uh, read activation state and the other one do order and in one we have one function with uh, this just uh, a single item order without login and in the other uh, class we have get activation state and uh, get activation date. And uh, that's it, so, so that, that's, that, that's the basics. And uh, of course, as already mentioned, you can customize the workflow with, within, within Salesforce. Uh, this is something, we have, we have already your own workflow and so you can integrate these three simple functions uh, at uh, yeah, the, the the point in the process which you think which is the best for, for you. 
Yeah, but uh, Stefan, what do you need to do to set up the product? Because as we have seen, the initial setup is a little bit Apex programming. Uh, in case of simple tickets, quite easy. In case of this uh, project with uh, modular software and so on, maybe some days more. Uh, but what do I need to do uh, before I can create a license? Now we have it in, in general. Yeah, okay. So uh, we have to uh, create the product uh, as well in Salesforce as in the License Central. So let's have a look first in, in Salesforce. Or do we have uh, questions in the moment? No, not yet. Okay. So we will change back to the uh, Salesforce part. So as you can see, I have my accounts here and I have a uh, tab products here on this side. And I have already defined for this webinar different uh, assets, uh, products, which means that we have, let's have a look in such a thing, for example, this one, the first one I had, I have sold to, to Rüdiger. So we can see here different product details and let's uh, have a look. So it is very easy. We have uh, a product code, which is the SKU, uh, which is an uh, identifier for the product and we have a product description here and um, you can have a product name, of course, for this product. So at the end, you define all the products that you have within this mask here. So we can do, for example, um, a new product here. So that is very easy. You can say it's the webinar SKU for that. And this is a webinar license. And at the end, that is all we have to do here to um, to define such a product. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, of course, the most in important thing here: the product name, webinar, basic license, for example. So now I have uh, an additional product defined. So if we check for the products now, I have all my predefined licenses here and I have now an additional license uh, which is called Webinar Basic License and this is just a definition of the name of the product and of the product code which means this is an SKU on the side of the License Central. So here you can see I have defined in this uh, Salesforce a lot of products, but on the other hand, we need, of course, the definition of these products also in the License Central. So this is the easy one on the Salesforce side, and we need to define <coughs> such a um, license as well on the side for the License Central. So let's switch to the License Central, and you can see here, <coughs> So maybe we need to log, log in again because after uh, more than five minutes uh, we will get logged out automatically. So Stefan already logs in. Uh, no, I don't want to save Stefan's password on my computer. Um, maybe not. And um, now what, we, what I need to do is to create uh, one more item here. And the important thing is that the item ID that Stefan has used in, uh, in Salesforce may be... May be no, minus o, 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 001 uh, needs to be the same uh, item or it needs to be the product code that Stefan used in his sample. The, the name is something I like to uh, use here. Uh, my great software, for instance, my great software, my great software. And uh, what we have seen uh, in the first sample of Stefan, that uh, we had a product uh, which, which where Stefan defines uh, if I can activate on a dongle or if the user can activate it on a, on a soft license. And uh, let's say we want to have a product where our user can uh, decide which one do we want to use. And in this case, we only need to assign both and say, okay, this could be a dongle-based license or a software-based license and the customer can decide it. And um, then here we can define all the product entries. So that means the license model, license option. So which product code, which is a technical thing that we want to use. And uh, let's say we use the product code uh, 200,000, for instance. 
and here we can add all the license options that you might already know from, from our system, like an expiration time for a time-based license, something like license quantity for floating network licenses, which can be stored in a local network, in a wide area network, or even in the cloud. Uh, maintenance period if you want to have or sell licenses with uh, the upgrade uh, rights for maybe one year. Uh, something like the name of the product, let's call this great software. Okay, and of course we can add more options uh, like for instance uh, unit counter if you want to have some pay-per-use stuff, so something like um, I want the Stefan sells uh, something on a pay-per-use base, so I'm purchasing 1,000 units, and each time when I do a, a printout, uh, it will be re reduced by one or so something similar. Uh, we can have some things like usage period, where it's a license which goes for an amount of days from the first start of the of the software. We can add our company name. Let's say this is our sample company. That's the name of the company. So, and uh, typically, uh, this type of information is uh, generated by the software developer or by the product manager, which is really close to the software developer, because this is correlated to the checks that we implement into into our software. And so, the only thing that we have or need from Salesforce is the item ID. So, the item ID in in our license central is the product code in, in Salesforce. And that's it, all the other information are really code meta relevant and it makes no sense to have the same information again in Salesforce. And so typically this interface is used to define the technical properties of uh, the product. And now Stefan, it should work, right? Can, can, you, can, you sell this, can you sell this product to me? Of course I can do that. So, let's switch back to the sample company and let's offer Rudiger as well the webinar product. So, this should now be here in our list, the webinar basic license. Okay, I sell this today for free. <laughs> Just a small description for that. I saved that and now I create another ticket for him. So webinar as a comment today. Webinar. I create that ticket and now we have the same procedure. We saved that ticket and now Rüdiger is able to activate this webinar ticket as well. Let's take a look if I'm really able to activate this, this, this uh, ticket also. Um, of course, Stefan needs to send me this email with the ticket number. I will just uh, copy it. And um, I'm going back to my portal, to home, and I'm entering the ticket number here. And now what, what we see now is, uh, now I can choose. Do I want to transfer the license into an ACT license or on your computer? Or do I want to transfer the license into a, a dongle, USB stick, or a CM card for Express and so on? And um, yeah, Stefan, what should, should uh, let's say I want to have a CM Act license, and you see my great software, that's the name that I defined, and uh, I say activate a CM Act license, and then it automatically uh, generates a container, and the license gets activated, sending received, and everything is fine, and we see my great software now is, is activated. And let's take a look here. On my computer now I have uh, a third uh, a dongle, a virtual dongle, a soft dongle, a soft container, sample company, and uh, if we take a look in our web admin and we refresh it, we also see here we have now a third one. And we see here the set the company, the firm code, and the product code. As you remember, maybe I entered the product code 200,000 and the name create software and the name sample company. That's where the string I have uh, added uh, in the uh, license central. And uh, now also the rest of the properties are not set because I 
only set these two strings, but of course all the other properties that we have seen like uh, feature code, usage period, of course, could be defined here in, in License Central. Yeah, by the way, if we go to License Central, then we have of course also in reporting, so we can uh, say we want to search for orders or we want to uh, search for, uh, for, for licenses and uh, let's say we search for the order for with the comment webinar. And then we see we have some orders with webinar. Okay, interesting. Maybe Stefan has already uh, tested this uh, sometimes yesterday. And so we see this is our, our order. This is the custom ID. This is the reference to the, the Salesforce system. And uh, when we go here to the uh, order, then we see there is the product webinar uh, 001 uh, included. And when we go to this page, then we come to the activation page. Okay, I want to go back and I click here. Then um, I also see that it is already activated. It was activated one time. Activation date was uh, the 4th of December 2014. It is in one container. I can see are there other licenses in this container or oh, no, there is only this one license in this container. So I have all the reporting available also in License Central that you might already know if you already use uh, License Central. And of course here in, in Salesforce, let me just say we want to get the activation state. As already uh, mentioned, we can also do this automated in the background. That's uh, mostly a question of the license model between you and Salesforce because typically you purchase an amount of callouts and uh, when you do the call out uh, very often then you need to pay a lot of money and uh, so maybe it's a better idea to get them when you need it or maybe it's an idea to um, uh, get many activation study of uh, many activations in one call out which can be of course also customized and now when we go back to sample company by the way we should see this license also was activated on the 4th of December 2014. When I return the product, Stefan, Stefan, is this already implemented? That we yeah, so because uh, t t typically what I can do is I can also return licenses, which is not implemented in this sample. Okay, so if I return a license, uh, then the license is removed from my dongle. And next time when I uh, call get activation state, I get the information, oh, this license is not activated and can be activated again. So also this can be implemented, but uh, Stefan just told me this is not available in this sample now. Yeah, so what we have seen, Stefan. Yes, uh, what we have seen, we created a product in Salesforce, it was very easy, and uh, we got created uh, the corresponding product in the License Central. Uh, so on both sides we have the same definition of the product, so there is no problem to make an asset in Salesforce on base of the products that are assigned in the License Central. Um, by the way, uh, the, the whole information that uh, Rudiger showed in the License Central can be, of course, uh, transferred to Salesforce using the SOAP interface. It's in your hands to do that at the end. Okay, there are some alternative options. So, Rudiger, what can we offer as well? So, okay, uh, what we have seen is a very simple integration, which fits for, you have small or only few products and you're selling this, this, this product and that's it. If you have a relationship with your customer and saying selling additional things, uh, having different licenses in different configurations, then uh, this is mainly not enough, then we need a more deeper integration. And in this case, uh, so if it's modular licensing, then you can say I'm creating a project and assigning assets to this project. And so if a customer has uh, two license contracts, he will get two projects from you. So one license contract is one project. 
you can assign assets to this project and then we have also an, a change management in our extended uh, Salesforce connector so it is it is possible to um, uh, to sell the, the same project so the same license contract again and what you get back is an, is a ticket which or you get back the same ticket but uh, now we know how to modify this uh, this project or this this license this license configuration um, we also can of course send order specific parameters so uh, if you have uh, licenses which you sell with an expiration time or if you have licenses which you sell with a maintenance contract uh, then in license center you can define that the end of the maintenance contract or the end of the of the expiration time is a field that you enter in Salesforce and this is also added to the transferred information to license central so not only just saying I'm selling this product I'm selling this product with this and this options this and this features and samples are that you want to write, maybe write the name of the of the customer in this case uh, is my name because I'm the customer so if you want to write the name of the customer in the license or so in the dongle itself it needs to be to be transferred if you want to write um, the um, end of the expiration time or end of the of the maintenance into the uh, into the license itself it can be transferred of, of course it needs some uh, adaptation in the apex apex programming that you add additional fields you need to configure these fields in license central and you need to uh, do this also in um, uh, in uh, in the apex programming so uh, Yes, I see there is one more question. Uh, if you want to sell a li software in some countries as licensed with maintenance, but in other countries as pay-per-use or so, do you need to set them up as different SKU than in Salesforce? Um, I think, yes, that's a good idea to set them up as different uh, products in Salesforce. You can set up one product and say it has this order defined options and you can say if it is empty then keep it empty, if not, not. But uh, maybe it's easier to handle to set them up with two SKUs uh, and two products in, in Salesforce. So both are possible but I think many different SKUs are the uh, better option. And I just see there is uh, one question which is now uh, a few minutes old. Uh, uh, Ton has seen that um, the uh, um, URL that we used was HTTP, not HTTPS. Uh, yes, this was from the. Uh, this is the um, HTTP address to get the WSDL file because it's not quite easy to get it via HTTPS and so we, we use this for the development reason uh, but of course the real system is running on HTTPS and so the uh, information which is transferred between Salesforce and License Central of course is encrypted. Uh, Ton, you got me. Okay, uh, fine. But uh, of course in the, in, the, in the real system it is, it is encrypted. Um, yeah, so uh, a, a small summary. Yes, you have seen now in the last 15 minutes how easy it is to integrate the License Central in your leading Salesforce system. And so you have all the things uh, available for uh, license creation and the license delivery. Salesforce is a very huge tool for such things. And at the end with the Code Media License Central, you have a powerful license management uh, for your use so that you can monetize your software uh, as much as it is possible. So this is all we want to show to you here with our webinar. I hope it was very interesting for you and you got a lot of new information for that. If you have any further questions, please use the chat for that. We will answer all the uh, questions uh, later on as well. So uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, have a nice day. So also from, from my uh, point of view, uh, thank you for being here and thank you for the many questions that you have already sent uh, to us. I see there's one more question about pricing, how much does License Central cost? Uh, 
Okay, this is the, of course depends on the addition that you want to have and in this case I would uh, refer you to your uh, sales accountant uh, who want to or who can make you a special offer uh, for the different editions. The desktop edition, the one that you can use inside your company is for free. The internet edition is with a one-time fee and the hosted editions of course have an annual fee but uh, the, the price is something you get directly from your sales contact. So, also from my side, thank you very much for being here. I wish you a nice day and I hope to hear and see you again with our next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.